Welcome to this video tutorial on the MRP module settings. Production settings need to be configured when you first implement manufacturing management. These provide the framework for all the work you implement through the tool. This video will include settings for the factory calendar, shop floor locations, logistic paths, work centers, and resources. In a second video, we'll cover the settings for bill of materials or BOM. All of these systems interconnect seamlessly to set a solid foundation for your manufacturing process. First, let's start with the factory calendar. The factory calendar defines the working days and hours for the planning period. The calendar can be used to ensure accurate capacity planning and scheduling. Navigate to Production, Settings, and Factory Calendar, and click on the green button, Set Up Calendar. The first step is to set the default operational hours for production. To do this, click on the calendar settings on the right side. From the drop-down list, select the day of the week in which the work week starts. Select the weekend days drop-down list and click on a day of the week to mark it as the weekend. Weekend days are displayed in grey. Set the start time, end time and break for each day of the week by clicking on the field for that day. Note that the factory calendar only allows for one break per day. You can click the copy icon at the end of a row to apply the hours from that row to all weekdays. Click apply changes to close the pop-up window. The calendar for the entire year is shown on the left, with the holidays shown as a list on the right. Click days in the calendar to add holiday entries, or add days by clicking the plus button and entering a date and an optional holiday description. DIR allows you to set custom working hours for some days of the year. Please note that these custom operational hours do not have priority over custom operational hours set to a specific resource. Click the plus button next to custom working hours to add a date and set its alternative operation hours. Custom working hours and holidays can be deleted by selecting the X button to the right of the entry and can be edited by clicking on the relevant fields. Note that as you edit the factory calendar, it will directly impact the capacity planner and scheduler module. Save all your changes to finish. Now we are going to move on to shop floor locations. Shop floor locations specify where finished goods are produced. Defining a location as a shop floor enables the location to be selected as a shop floor location in a logistic path and used in production orders. Go to Settings, Reference Books, Locations and Bins to define the shop floor locations for your business. Select the box next to the location you wish to make the role of a shop floor. Next, we are going to look at logistic paths, which can be configured from within the logistic path tab. A logistic path connects the storage, production, and retail locations in the system, noting that they can be the same location. This is used to factor in the lead time for components for accurate ordering and production scheduling. It also enables automatic generation of documents, such as purchase orders and transfer orders, and logs stock movements. To add a logistic path, Click on the plus sign to select the warehouse, shop floor, and retail locations, and then save the changes. Now let's move on to work centers. Work centers define the area where a production operation takes place within the shop floor. For example, a specific workshop, room, or section of the shop floor. All components for a production operation should be delivered to the work center for the production operation to begin picking. Work centers are created in the settings of the production module, which can be found via Production, Settings, and the Work Center tab. To create a work center, click on the plus button, enter the codes and names for your work centers, then save before continuing. Now you can move on to linking these to the shop floor locations and their bins. 
Bins are used to specify where the stock is stored within a location. For a production work center, bins define where the components should be brought into in order to start a production operation. If a bin is not defined for the work center, components for that work center will be delivered to the default shop floor location. You can navigate quickly back to the locations and bins section by selecting the delivery components to field. Navigate to the bins tab and select shop floor location from the drop down list. From here, you can select the plus button to add new bins you require, or connect existing bins to work centers by completing the work center column. Note that the same work center can be reused across multiple shop floor locations. Once complete, be sure to save your changes before continuing. Next, we're going to move on to resources. Production is made possible with resources. These can be tools, machines, and even people. Each resource has a total capacity, which measures the capability of a resource to produce some amount of finished goods over a given time. Knowing the capacity of the resource, it is then possible to calculate how much time and when it is required to produce the specific finished good. Resources are created in the settings of the production module, which can be found via Production, Settings, and the Resources tab. You can choose to view all business resources, or only currently operational resources by checking or unchecking the Only Operational section. Resources use service products to correctly define their costs and account mapping. Before proceeding, please ensure you're familiar with the process of creating service products and their costs. To create a new resource, click on the plus button on the left hand side, which will open a new window. From here, complete the compulsory fields such as the resource code, resource name, type, including labor, machine, and other, and the operational status. Infinite resource is the type of resource that has a cost but does not have a capacity limitation and does not affect the scheduler. This could be a utility such as water or electricity. When the use all available resource option is checked, it allows the operation to occupy all available capacity for the resource regardless of the quantity set in the product bill of materials. If not checked, the individual resource number specified in the bill of materials will be used when capacity planning. For example, if the bill of materials for 100 muffins has one oven as a resource, and you have five ovens available, this option would result in the system using all five ovens to bake 100 muffins instead of just one, which would allow the production days to be reduced. So if it was going to take one oven two days to bake 100 muffins, then five ovens can complete that process in four hours. The first tab, Capacity, is used to set the operational hours for the resource at each shop floor location. These hours will be used to determine the capacity for the resource. Resource capacity is calculated based on the number of individual resources and operational hours. In the Capacity tab, you'll have all the active shop floors listed. You can add individual resources by clicking the Number of Individual Resources field for a location. This will allow you to set custom operational and non-operational intervals for the resource and also give them a name. If the resource type is set to labor, you'll be required to assign each to a corresponding dear user and specify the operational and non-operational hours. Please note that a resource's custom operational hours and work on weekend and holiday settings have priority over the standard operational hours and custom hours from the factory calendar. Next, set the resource cost per production operation by accessing the cost tab. The cost per operation is calculated based on the cost set up for a unit of time. The cycle's duration defines the default time for this type of operation. The cycle duration affects the cost of the resource, but does not affect the resource capacity and scheduling. Each resource cost is defined by a service product, transactions where no physical goods are transferred, for example, labor, electricity, or water. Users can also assign multiple service products to each resource if required. Click on the plus button and select a service product from the drop-down menu. Choose the relevant account, then the price tier to populate the cost. From here you can select the exact unit of time related to the cost for that resource. 
This means that if the cost of your resource is $10 per hour, I would select one hour in the unit of time. The Attachments tab is intended for attaching any instructions or documents that are needed for this resource. Attachments are limited to 32 megabytes. The Remarks tab is intended for any internal comments and cannot be deleted or edited. Don't forget to save changes before creating any other resources. The final section we're covering in this video are Suspend Reasons. Suspend Reasons are created in the Settings of the Production module, which can be found by Production, Settings, and the Suspend Reasons tab. Suspend Reasons allow you to create the classifications that are used when suspending any operation during production. To add a reason, simply click on the plus button on the left hand side. Select the work centers this reason applies to, and fill in the reason name. After that, click save. Repeat this process for as many suspended reasons as you require. And that concludes this video.